Hi guys, Chenge Tai here. Welcome to my podcast, Kwa Chenge. Uh, today I am talking about preparation in all its forms for a new baby, new life, new year, <laughs> new everything. Uh, so as most of you know, in fact, you should know by now that I'm a wellness professional. I am actually an American Council on Exercise Certified Group Fitness Trainer fitness nutrition specialist, and my favorite, pregnancy and postpartum trainer, which is so fitting <laughs> seeing how I am also part of Team Preggy Mama um, currently in my life journey. So today we will be talking about preparation, like I said, in all its forms. We'll talk about physical, mental, emotional, financial, and just preparation in general, just because we can. Um, so the biggest preparation actually starts with you before you, you know, start thinking about, Oh, I need to get this for baby. I need to book for this. I need to sign up for this. If you are not mentally and physically prepared for the journey that's ahead, then you might struggle a lot, <laughs> actually not even a little, a lot. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that. The moment okay let me take you back for those that haven't had kids yet this one's for you if you are even thinking about having a baby in the future and if you're not working out now is the time please start working out now prepare your body now prepare your mind now yes you can work out when you fall pregnant but it is ideal <laughs> that you start on your wellness and your fitness journey long before um, you start growing a miracle inside you. Okay? Okay. As for Team Preggy already, um, first trimester for a lot of us is a nonsense. It is a very sensitive time. So if you haven't been into fitness, if you haven't been living that lifestyle, then take it easy don't even worry about it just take it easy take it slow like i said the first trimester is very sensitive and most of us are exhausted we're tired we're sick even so if you're having a very tough first trimester then don't even put pressure on yourself but if you have been you know living a fitness lifestyle by all means carry on but just make sure that your doctor knows that you are continuing with your workouts, you might have to reduce intensity and frequency, but then you just keep moving as much as you can. I would personally recommend at least three days a week. I mean, we've got seven days in a week. Three days is ideal. It's a good minimum if you've been working out all along, especially if it hasn't been intense. But if it's been intense, you also listen to your body. You are the expert of your body at the end of the day, but you let your um, doctor know. And if you have a trainer, you also let them know because sometimes there are trainers that do not know how to train a client who is pregnant. So you want to make sure that you are in capable hands. And I love that now in our industry, we're getting more and more trainers who are female, who are mothers, and who are also certified to carry out this you know, this service. So just make sure that you do your research and you go with somebody you are confident and comfortable with. Second trimester, however, everybody can get on board. And this is if you do not have a complicated high risk pregnancy. If your pregnancy is a high risk, if you have multiples, if you're sick, if you've got high blood pressure, if you are obese, if you've got diabetes, you know, and all these things, that might hinder you from moving, then take it easy. Do what you can and just, you know, wait for the growth and birth of your child. But if you do not have all these underlying issues, by all means, please join the fitness bandwagon. It will do wonders for you, not only in labor, but also for your post recovery. So for your second trimester, you'll find that you can actually do a lot, if not most of the workouts because your belly isn't showing yet, your energy is back, 
and you can pretty much do a lot. You can swim, you can go for yoga, you can go for dance fitness, you can lift weights, you can, you've got so many options. But as your belly starts growing and as you start nearing the end of your second trimester, also depending on how you are carrying, moving into the third trimester, you'll find that core workouts become a little more challenging. So that is where your trainer needs to know where or how to help you because you obviously cannot <laughs> lie down on your belly for most um, core workouts or on your back so you need um, some regressions and some room to navigate certain movements mind you core movements but your legs and your arms are usually fine you don't usually have to change much when it comes there so why do we work out when we're pregnant it's it's a mental game at the end of the day it helps you know that you can do hard things it helps prepare you for the long and arduous labor not all of us have one hour labors some of us go for days i went for like three days <laughs> of labor with my daughter so it's so important for you to have that endurance and to give your body the chance to you know be able to do what it wants to do and do what it's supposed to do if it ends up being an emergency c-section it's still okay it's still fine birth is birth at the end of the day but even then you still have to recover whether it's vaginal delivery or whether it's c-section you still want to recover well and working out makes sure that your post recovery is better Mind you, I'm not saying snap back. I said recovery because we then put so much pressure on ourselves to snap back and get back to our pre-baby bodies. But listen, you are a mama now and you carry your mama body with pride. If anything, you get so much more stronger, so much more better because you went through this amazing life changing process and you came out on the other side and you conquered. So you carry your battle scars, <laughs> your wounds with pride because listen, pregnancy and labor is an actual war, which I hope that you can prepare yourself for through working out. So it's possible, very much possible. And I'm sure my journey so far has showed you that as well. I am walking, I'm showing up to the gym, I am trying out new things. I am taking care of my body because I also know what it means for me and what it means for my daughter who is also watching me, what it means for young women who want to have children at some point in their lives, for mamas who have had children, for mamas who are pregnant. It just shows that women are phenomenal. Women are amazing. We are fantastic beings and we can do absolutely anything we set our minds to as long as the environment and the body <laughs> also allows um, so that's that on physical preparation mental preparation your pregnancy is a lot just psyching up even for labor is a lot and since i started sharing my journey i've had a number of expecting mummies come into my DMs, come into my inbox and tell me, oh my gosh, I'm so anxious. I don't know what to do, especially the first time moms, but take it one day at a time. Enjoy the journey. It's so easy to start worrying about the sleepless nights. It's so easy to start worrying about, oh, I don't know what hospital I'm going to go to, or I'm so annoyed that I can't sleep, that I constantly have to go to the toilet. It comes with the process. It's a part of the story. So I'm not going to say enjoy it, but it's going to happen. It's happening, but take it for what it is. It's not going to last long. Nine months is not a long time, guys. We have our children way longer than the time we carry them for, God willing. <laughs> so, you know, just make sure that you take everything how you can ask for help where you can ask for help but just know that it's a hard it's a hard process it's a hard journey and don't compare your pregnancy to the next person's pregnancy and be very mindful of who you're hearing advice from 
yes, there are certain people in our families, in our circles, online, who have their own thoughts and their own opinions, and they don't necessarily apply to you. So know what to take, know what not to take, and make your journey your own. I would encourage that you journal or you record, you take so many pictures because you'll wake up one day, you have a newborn, you have a five-year-old, you have a teenager, you have a young adult, and you look back and you forget <laughs> what you looked like. You forget what you went through because it's so easy to forget because we're living through so much life. We're going through so many moments. So this is a part of the process. So as part of your mental preparation, just, you know, go through the motions, but also capture, capture the moments. It's so important for you to preserve your memories, not only for yourself, but for your children as well. And then we go to financial. Yo, money, money, money. See, money is not everything, but it makes everything a whole lot easier. <laughs> and this is true. So most of now the other side of preparation, which is preparing your bag, preparing baby's bag, the hospital you're going to go to, um, your doctor, etc, etc. It's very much dependent on your financial status as well. You know what your pocket looks like. So it's very wise to be mindful of that. We sometimes want so much to happen when we want our moment to be this wow and amazing. And these days on social media, there's so much pressure. There's the gender reveals, there's a baby shower, there's the push gift, and there's the post birth celebration or baby welcome, etc, etc. But you know you know yourself and you know your financial lane and it's very important for you to plan wisely and for someone like me who is a hustler <laughs> i know that my time is limited because i may have a month or two months where i am incapacitated not because i don't want to work but because i am recovering from birth i am learning to navigate life with a newborn and a preschooler and just life is happening so I make sure that I am saving and I am uh, intentional about the amount of money I am spending, not only for myself, which is very little, <laughs> to be honest, but for the baby as well. It's very easy to get carried away and buy all the cute little rompers and the cute little socks and the cute little outfits. But if my first taught me anything, it's your people will come through for you. I'm telling you, everybody will kind of want to buy something and ease the pressure, which is great. So that leaves you with some kind of room. Don't buy every single little thing. And I think our environment also allows for us to buy as we go. You don't have to buy clothes for the whole year just because the baby is coming now. For now, you can buy zero to three months, three to six months, and maybe six to nine months. But it is much wiser to invest in three to six months um, because if you just buy newborn clothes, they're going to grow out of those pretty quickly. Zero to three, they might grow out of those pretty fast as well. So you want to, you know, just stay in the range of three to six months and then six to nine months. And then you just play it by ear and see how it goes from there and al allow yourself to be helped ask for help if there's something that you need hey guys i need diapers i need wipes do not be afraid have a gift registry <laughs> if you can you'd be surprised the amount of people that want to help you and i think i'll do it too i know someone came onto my instagram and they were like oh please have a public registry girl i will definitely do that because i am taking all the help i can get it just goes to show that I am willing to be loved and I'm open to be loved financially. Yes. <laughs> um, what else? What else? What else? Emotionally. Yes. Emotional preparation. This one I am still learning to navigate. I'll be very honest with you. Some days I am so scared. Some days I'm so excited. 
some days I'm just like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? How am I going to do this? And as my days get closer and closer to me meeting baby GP, um, I'm in a bit of a whirlwind of emotions, I'll be very honest. I, I just, I don't know. I'm just like, I've never had to deal with a baby boy before, apart from, you know, just being a part of the parenting journeys of some of my um, friends who are parents to boys, but that's by proxy. I'm not in the nitty gritties of it. So I'm so used to being a girl mom and I'm now used to the emotions that come with being a girl mom. But being a boy mom, I think is going to be interesting. It's going to be a ride in itself. Um, but I think it's also allowing for me to feel, just feel what you're feeling and go through the motions, but we have to be strong. <laughs> I don't like that we have to be strong, but motherhood requires, requires it um, from us. We don't have much of a choice when it comes to that emotional strength and emotional intelligence as well. But if there's one thing that's very annoying to me, I'll say right now, is my emotions solely being linked to the pregnancy. I am still a person outside of my pregnancy. I still have feelings outside of my pregnancy. I'm not angry because I'm pregnant. I'm not sad because I'm pregnant. I'm still chenge. So if people around me can understand that, it's like saying, oh, I want to eat an avocado today. Oh, cravings. Oh, I want, no. <laughs> I still want things because I'm still me. I can enjoy things outside of the pregnancy. And that really, uh, <laughs> really gets to me. But, yeah, I guess it, it comes with the emotion because I also know that that's the most newest addition to my life and most people will be excited about baby GP more than they're excited about me. <laughs> and I think that's one of the emotional things that I now know um, will come with the journey. Everybody, when, they, when you give birth is, oh, how's the baby? How's the baby? And you're like, hello, I'm here. You know me. You don't know this person, they just got here. <laughs> so please don't forget mummies. Please greet us first. <laughs> you know us, I worked hard for this person to, to come into this life. Um, but yeah, just be mindful and just be thoughtful also when you're commenting about mothers and how they look. <sighs> we know our faces are changing. We know our bodies are changing. And sometimes it comes across as very mean and very aggressive when you comment on the changes that are happening to us in, in that way. You know, eh, and they were shata. It's not a greeting. Never has been, never will be. Be prepared to catch hands one of these days. You must be very mindful. I do not condone violence, but come on, you get what I'm trying to say. So let's be kind. Ultimately, let us be kind. But I really hope that this sparks a conversation and we can continue talking about the different ways that we can prepare um, to be better parents, to be better friends, to be better people, to the people that are bringing new lives into this world. Because hey, it's a lot, guys. We are going through it but I'm so glad I get to share this part of my journey with you and I cannot wait for you to watch the next episode.